part of the Everestin group. Our chairman is uh, Mr. Pashupati Bhandari, and we have been doing a lot of uh, things uh, quite recently for Nepal. I mean, of course, uh, just before the pandemic, it was going in a full swing. Uh, we were sending a lot of uh, people to Nepal for tracking, for cultural heritage, and a lot of different tours around Nepal. I mean, uh, I'm the director in the Young's Travel, and it is my personal belief that Nepal is uh, not just about uh, the, the mountains, the adventure, and the, what people really seek about it. There is a lot more to offer. And uh, yeah, we have been doing the worldwide holidays for over 30 years, but Nepal has been a very keen interest for us, especially uh, once we have started doing more and more with the Nepalese community and the British friends and the European friends. Uh, last year, we were supposed to do an Everest base camp track. Uh, unfortunately, that couldn't happen. We had a lot of participants uh, and a lot of people uh, shown their interest. Uh, I mean, we had people from uh, US, Australia, New Zealand, of course, Europe and uh, Britain. Um, but we are very sure that once this uh, pandemic is over, or maybe even if it is not over, when the travel is sort of fully open, we'll have uh, more and more people going there. Uh, I don't know if you want me to talk about the challenges and everything else we have this uh, we are supposed to discuss now. Uh, if that is for the part of the discussion later in the in the session, then I think we'll leave it there. But if it is, if it is just an introduction, then this is pretty much we do. Uh, uh, no, you can go ahead. Uh, so if you could uh, talk about like next ten minutes uh, about your work, uh, your thoughts, yeah, sure. and we'll. I'll move on. Like a quick. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Dipeshji. What I'll do is like I'll share a small presentation. I, I'll sure. try to keep it as interactive as possible and uh, try not to. Let me just share the screen and then we can. Uh, I'm not sure if you are able to share. Uh, can you could you check if you can share? Your uh, no, I, I can't. Yeah. No. Uh, let, let me make you co-host then. Uh, so you should be able to share now. How's everyone doing today? Uh, is it, uh, how's the weather like in your places? Is it, uh, I can see people are from the different uh, parts of uh, Europe. Uh, how's the weather like everyone? Is is weather treating you all okay? Yeah, pretty. I think pretty cold in the UK at the moment. <laughs> Indeed, yes, yeah. Uh, sorry, I just, uh, didn't I just talk about uh, Ah, it's okay. DPC is doing uh, presenting. It's very really like it's nice. It's snowing. It was snowing this morning, but not anymore in Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. Hope you can see my screen now. Can any everybody see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Right. So. I mean, I've told, I've spoken about the Young's Travel uh, a little bit already. Uh, so, you know, like we are 30 year old travel agent, have lots of customers doing all the worldwide holidays, everything else. Uh, we are at all protected as well, which is a common uh, requirement and which is quite mandatory for someone doing seriously in the business and uh, everything else. You are already aware of that. Um, of course, uh, this is one of the picture we from the, I think it is from the 2019, uh, when we took a uh, British uh, friends to Nepal. This picture is uh, in the background of Lumbini. I mean, uh, one of the, the monastery there. Uh, and you can see our chairman, Pashwati Bhandari, Yada Bhandari, myself, and quite a few uh, British friends there. Uh, it was quite a, quite a good trip, actually. Um, I'll quickly move on to the challenges in driving European tourists to Nepal. I guess there are quite a few agendas we wanted to discuss. And uh, I put them down as a small bullet point so that we can discuss uh, not much in detail, but uh, hopefully to make my point clear what I really believe. And hopefully some of you can agree for it. And then we can uh, pass it on to on the floor for the discussion further. Um, so, of course, the first one being we all are aware that there is no direct flight to Nepal at the moment. Uh, that is uh, one of the main challenge, I would say, in a sense, like many people have to still travel to Nepal via uh, Gulf, India, China, 
there are different parts, but it could have been better if we had a direct flight either from Europe or from uh, UK. Uh, since, uh, I mean, uh, UK is not, not part of the European Union any longer, so we are hoping that uh, the Nepalese government or the, uh, the Nepal Airlines might soon uh, start a flight. We don't know where, when that will happen, but if that happens, that will surely going to help a lot of people all around the Europe and in Britain. Um, so let's see when that happens. The other challenge which I personally see is marketing deficiency. There is much more needs to be done uh, in terms of the marketing. Uh, there are different ways of marketing. I, I understand there may be some budget constraint, but that can be tackled if we can do the, the smart marketing without spending too much of money or uh, the way, uh, you know, like we can involve quite a lot of people and then uh, let's make a pool of uh, thought process there. And then we can do quite a lot of things uh, in terms of the marketing. But the marketing, uh, the way I see it, it has to be done more aggressively. Uh, there should be a different approach to it. Um, of course, I mean, we are all the tour operators and the travel agents around the, the Europe. And uh, we all love Nepal. We want to send people to Nepal. We, we have been doing it with our own resources for quite some time. But uh, once the people are there, the facility is there in Nepal. Uh, needs to revamp. Uh, I personally think, I mean, uh, I remember like quite a few occasion when we took the people from Kathmandu to Pokhara, uh, you know, like it was, it was a road journey and there, there are things which could have been done differently. Uh, I may be wrong when I'm saying this, but I've seen, I've, I've traveled quite a lot of countries all around the world. Uh, I can tell you like uh, my, uh, my visit to Cuba, I think that was in 2018. And I mean, you know, like there are so many restrictions, the country is not really open yet. If you compare the facilities they have, uh, I mean, the resources Nepal have is maybe much bigger than Cuba or so for that matter, the, the country is similar to that, but still uh, there are things needs to be done. Uh, infrastructure, there is no need to say uh, the Kathmandu airport uh, is the only gateway for the international flights at the moment. That infrastructure needs to be changed. We need more international airports. Bhairava and Pokhara is definitely coming up soon, but there are things which can be done. Um, that is my belief. And uh, uh, I think it will change. I mean, we don't just want to talk about the, uh, you know, like the, the, the negative sides of it. We like to talk about the, the solution as well, but I'm sure like there are things which can be done. Um, the second part of the, the the presentation is about like what we can really do in terms of the strategy once uh, this COVID is over. I, I think the Nepal must need to give a very clear message uh, to the people all around the world and the tourists who wish to travel to Nepal about the safety and hygiene. Once the COVID is over or let's say when we have more people vaccinated and everything else and people start to travel. Uh, it will be a different world. I mean, we may, it, it won't be the same what it used to be uh, one year ago. People will start asking about the safety, people will ask about uh, hygiene, the standards and everything else. So there should be a very clear message. Uh, I know personally uh, the Everest region is quite good in terms of that, but we need to have the same level of uh, uh, approach all around Nepal. I mean, we personally send people to different parts of Nepal, not just the Everest region. So I like to see that sort of thing happening all around Nepal. Um, I think I said in the beginning of my presentation before we all started this, I'll, I think Nepal has so much different to offer, not just the mountain or the adventure or the trekking. Uh, uh, the peaks are amazing. The Himalayan tracks are amazing, but there is the, the Nepal has a very uh, diverse tourism uh, industry, which can be addressed. Uh, I mean, the wildlife is amazing there. Uh, we can send people for the wildlife. We can send people for the cultural heritage, uh, especially the food. It's, uh, I think it's uh, going to be a next huge, huge thing for Nepal in coming years. Uh, so that is another thing which can be done. Confidence building. When I say about the confidence building, I, I mean, I mean, quite a lot of people all around the Europe and the world, they want to, I mean, they may not follow our Nepalese media, but they may follow the international media. And uh, they may see that there, there may be some instability in terms of the politics or something. We can't really do much about it. That will be there 
uh, we can't change much about that, but we can send a message about the confidence building that yes, the country is stable, you can visit us and there is a, uh, you'll have a very hassle-free, very enjoyable, pleasant, uh, a different uh, holiday experience, you know. Uh, and last but not the least is a unified approach, which I always talk about. Uh, we, all travel agents and all the tour operators, we must need to come together as a unifying force and strength. We need to work together. We need to see where, what we can do. There is so many things we can do, but we must need to come together and then put our heads down and brainstorming and then there will be a much clear point of view and that will be a success, definitely. Uh, the last one is uh, uh, the main agenda of the this session is about the jump start European tourist flow to the Nepal. Um, it's pretty similar to the previous slide, but uh, there are certain things which I believe we can do. We need to have more public relation representatives uh, from different countries, from different uh, uh, parts of uh, Europe. Uh, and those people, we need to assign some responsibilities. Everyone is quite busy with their business and everything else. But once they have this added responsibility or out of love, out of compassion, I'm sure they will do uh, more about it. The, the government support and embassy support is there. We have uh, had some fantastic support in the past, but it needs to be more and more and more ideas need to come through uh, to the government channels. Uh, the one thing which I always believe is the educational trips to the travel professionals. Uh, I've been part of the many, many uh, educational trips and I can tell you for that these have helped me immensely. So we as a travel agent or tour operator, we need to send quite a lot of people to Nepal. When they come back, they may have a different uh, picture of Nepal. They may tell the world what different Nepal can offer. Maybe they have a very specific set of mind when it comes to Nepal, but it will change for sure. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to be very cost uh, uh, costly measure. I'm sure like the hotels, the airlines, we can tie up it. We can get it done in a very reasonable price as well. But these things must need to be done from everyone, uh, from the tour operators and from the government side. Uh, but, but that will help uh, and boost the Nepal tourism immensely. That is my belief. Uh, again, the, the last bit, uh, because I go to quite a lot of mountain festivals, uh, and our team normally attend, uh, whether it is in the UK or Europe, we try to go there actively to support or to encourage or to get some, of course it is a, it is a business uh, trip, but it helps immensely. Uh, maybe we can do more and more uh, as, as a group or something, but this will definitely help in the long run. Uh, finally, I have a small clip. Uh, I know I must have bored you with my this uh, presentation with a lot of uh, content to talk about. This uh, small video is uh, from the Annapurna Trek. You can see in the video like there is a, uh, the age group is quite uh, in their 70s and everything, but the fun they are having is amazing. Uh, I think this is what Nepal can truly offer to all these people. Uh, I'm not too sure if you can see the video, but I'll try to play it. Well, that was pretty much. I mean, I just wanted to showcase like what Nepal can really offer. And uh, we, we have uh, quite a lot of groups who really enjoy. And there is much more we can do together. So it will be really good. 
Uh, I hope I didn't take much of your time. So thank you for listening. Hope to see everyone very soon uh, in the real world, in the normal, what we call it normal now. So yeah, thank you, Dipesh. Uh, I think I'll close my screen and then, yeah. Uh, yes, that's you. great. Uh, thanks, thanks, Rosenzi. Um, it's brilliant. Um, so.